I grew up in an abusive home and, uh, you know, one of my ways of surviving was just like mentally dissociating, checking out. Um, and I leaned really heavily on things as a distraction, like especially movies and music. I remember being, I think it was second grade, I uh, kind of knew that I wanted to be an artist. An artist was something that made sense to me. It was like I was pretty good at it. I was interested in it. It didn't feel as competitive. I mean, in the 90s, you don't have that online kind of like chit chat that you can connect with other people who are really into this niche band or really into this like obscure film. And so when I did kind of come across people, I was like, you get it, right? Like you get the power of that, that feeling of that movie or that song or whatever. And I think there was always that part of me as a creator that wanted to try to bring those elements into my work. So by the time I got to my junior year at high school, any class I could take that was sort of artistic so that I wouldn't have to take as many other classes that were more boring. So I had taken, in prior years, I had taken like calligraphy and I had taken sculpture and ceramics and all kinds of different things. So when photography became an option, I was like, yeah, let's try that. And my dad had always, been kind of the photographer in the family. He was like, well, I shot a bunch in the Air Force and he had like a, an SLR that he took on vacations. And I remember him always fussing over the controls. I took that class and I really, it really, something in it just like I fell in love with and the, and the art teacher just let me stay in the art class. Anything we wanted to do, like me and my buddy, Jamie, we would just play and, and she, she would be like, well, let me show you this like lift film or like pinhole stuff. Like we would just kind of make pinhole cameras out of any object we could find and go out and mess around with solarization or any kind of like practical effects. And the teacher really encouraged that. And we would like go shoot pinholes, bring it in, develop it in the, in the wet lab, scan it into the Photoshop and then manipulate it in Photoshop. And that's how we spent like our whole year basically. That's when I really got hooked. And so then when I got to my senior year, I got into the Fort Hayes Career Center for photography. It was kids from all over the city. And we were there for four hours a day and we had so much freedom and they, they supplied all the film and photo paper we needed. We had like a whole studio with any kind of lens. They had large format cameras. It just blew my mind, you know? So I just, I dove in all the way and I would often do two or three of the assignments, like, because I'm like, well, this was the way it's kind of cool. Let me try it in this way too. And I was turning in like triple the amount of work because I was just so into it. And I was like, this is going to go away in a year. So I need to use this as much as I can. And I honestly still say today, I learned more in that one year at Fort Hayes than I did in four years at Ohio State. A buddy of mine let me start working out of his studio. He was a designer. And so I started shooting personal work then and started getting more creative. And, and if I see a photo that I love online, I wanna to try to recreate that, reverse engineer it. And so that's kind of just like my mad scientist lab that I've set up where I've just like always playing and trying different variations on a thing. And, and now I'm at a point now where people will see those personal shoots that I do and they'll ask me to do it for, for their brand or if they're a musician, do it for their, you know, for their album. I left um, social media in 2019. I deleted my Instagram and Twitter as well because I was just feeling a lot of anxiety. Didn't really know why, but I knew that I couldn't be on there anymore. And so I ended up taking a climbing class at the local climbing gym because I had heard my buddy tell me for years just how much he loved it. My wife had been encouraging me to, to try it out. I later learned through therapy that I dissociate. I, I disconnect my mind from my body and doing something like climbing or or cycling, I, I also really got back into cycling. I used to do that a lot. Um, and going on full day bike rides really grounded me in my body and it just pushed the whole world away. Like I'm very present, you know, cause I have to focus on what my body's doing and I can't just check out. On Instagram, you can just scroll forever and it, it's very hard to get perspective and see how far I've come and look at my journey rather than comparing myself to other people's journeys. And it's, a, it's not a great form of inspiration. That's like motivation at gunpoint versus like being on my bike and, and thoughts coming organically without urgency. Ultimately, when I decided to come back to social a year later, it was because of all the stuff I'd worked through and I didn't need Instagram to tell me that I could survive or that I was good enough. And I knew that I needed to kind of uncurate myself and share stuff from my personal life along with my professional work. Because as long as I'm sharing only my professional work, I'm gonna view it as a failure or a success based on the reciprocation. Doing the creative work that I do in the Midwest, 
I don't always have someone knocking on my door to do creative work. So if I can do creative work on my own, because that's what I'm passionate about, and then monetize it in another way, whether that's teaching about how to do it or licensing the images for, for stock or whatever it is, I'm gonna do that because that means I can do more of what I love and get paid for it. There's also a community element that's built into that because people get so excited to see the setups and how simple they are. So you don't have to have a big studio and a whole crew and an agent you know model and all this stuff like just use what you have access to these techniques still translate and it'll start getting your mind kind of going in new directions and that moment that aha moment that click that excitement is is really cool to see in other people and i get emails and messages all the time just people like hey i started photography two months ago and here's what i did after reading your book and it's like something that I couldn't do for the first 15 years of my photography. I'm like, you just picked up the camera a month ago and you're at that level now? And I was like, for me, that's super cool because I'm like, okay, it works. Like, I've, I've communicated it clearly. You've, you've read the stuff, you figured it out, and you've done it. Like, you're already there. Well, even when I started climbing, I mean, I had to start over. I had to be new at something. I, I had to fail many, many times, like with photography. I don't fail as much now because I know what I'm doing and I've been doing it for a long time. And it's easier to not take risks versus like pushing myself and maybe I fail or maybe I make something greater than I've ever made before. And climbing is the same way where it's just like, I'm not gonna grow unless I'm trying harder routes. And same with setting routes. Like once I got a gym here, I had to set routes. So I didn't have someone setting routes at the gym. And that was a whole new skill set, trying to figure out like, okay, well, how do I, set a route that's interesting. How do I, so I'm not just moving linearly across the wall. How do I force my body to move a different way? And where should the holds go for that? And I can really see the art form of that. There's a lot of composition in setting routes. You know, it's very much like a, a music composer or a painter or something because you're, you're putting these things that you're gonna force someone to do, like a, a dance choreographer or something like that. I also kind of ran out of inspiration with lighting because I was, I was like, at that point, I'd kind of seen it all. So I started looking at like painters and like, how can I bring in like painterly elements to my photos? Like, I really like the way this painter's brush strokes look. Can I somehow bring that in? And I don't like Photoshop because I'm like, I'm okay at Photoshop, but you have to be a master at it to be able to make it look real. The challenge I like more than that is like, how can I get this in camera? How can I use practical effects? There's gotta be a way. And so I do a lot with projectors and I just kind of mix in techniques. I might put a piece of glass up between me and the subject and cover it with coconut oil or honey or different materials or use a reflective surface that's malleable like mylar or something like that so you can get these really trippy psychedelic effects but they're in camera and I can control them and I can manipulate them and I can shoot a hundred of them rather than spend 15 hours on one file on Photoshop and that's it you know so there's a lot more potential for like happy accidents and surprises and so I'm just always just tweaking adjusting and then revisiting a, a technique you know and it just takes the work in vastly different directions and sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll hit some sweet spot in my work and I'm like that feels like what I was trying to get at. I couldn't put it into words, and I don't know if that even translates, but I know that that's, it feels right to me now. And it was easy, you know, early on to just kind of move on because people who don't know the potential for, for pushing it further would be like, oh, that's great, that's pretty, that's beautiful. That, they kind of accepted it as is, and I was never fully satisfied, like, no, it can be better. You know, it has pushed me beyond a relatively straightforward type photography because I get bored with it. And, and there's that, that part of me that needs to be special and accepted. Not only that need to like be seen and be recognized, that need to survive is also mixed in there. And like, if there's someone as good as me, that means we're gonna be vying for the same job. And that means I might not survive. I might not be able to provide for my family. And so there's this mixture of inspiration and total like fear of annihilation, <laughs> like mixed together. That fight or flight thing in me, I don't need to rely on that so much. I need to learn to be present and to see what I have, to know that like I am in a safe place and I've built something sustainable and I can exist in that space, you know, and it's not all gonna be taken away from me. But that, that need to keep creating is still there. And as long as I can use it in a healthy space, I think uh, it sort of becomes a superpower. <laughs> 
people that are considering getting into a creative field, reach out and talk to people that are in that field and just make contacts and like ask if you can assist, buy coffee and be a fly on the wall and just watch. And always shoot or create for yourself, you know? Like don't overthink it, just always be creating. I, I know so many people that just get stuck in the what should I do? And there's an expression that's easier to steer a moving car than a parked car. Like if you just sit there waiting for the inspiration, you're never gonna move. You just have to start and then just figure it out as you go, you know? And that's kind of my default, and my wife will be the first to agree with that, is just like, I don't think, I just jump in. And she thinks and sometimes never jumps in, and so we kind of balance each other out in that way, because often I need to think more before I jump in, but sometimes it works out.